How can we describe the space around us? If we take a room, it can be broken down into a combination of points, lines, which can be extended indefinitely in both directions, planes, angles, and the distance between them. This is the first immediate assumption, if we just look at the surface of things, and it is based on classical geometry. But what if we overlay Cartesian coordinates on pretty much any surface we want in that room? Well, then we'll have a 2D representation, pretty much like a plane, but with coordinates that can be labeled X and Y, which allows us to pinpoint locations on the plane. This is what we refer to as R2. However, to capture all sides of an object, we move to a three-dimensional space R3, where instead of having just two directions X and Y, we have three, Z being third, allowing us to describe any point with three coordinates. But we don't have to stop here. We can go on and increase dimensions. The concept doesn't have to be confined to just three dimensions. We can conceptualize Euclidean spaces in higher dimensions as well. A Euclidean space can be n-dimensional, holding all possible tuples of n real numbers, x1, x2, all the way to xn, with each number representing a coordinate in one dimension of that space. The distance between two points x1, x2, and so on to xn, and y1, y2, and so on to yn, in rn, is given by the following formula. This is a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. In itself, we just described a Euclidean space. But did you know that if we zoom out, we actually described a manifold, but locally? Think of it like this. If we have a line, we can turn the ends out to form a circle. But if we zoom out on a tiny piece of the circle, it looks very much like a line, locally speaking. This is a pretty important idea to grasp, because pretty much any closed loop in one dimension is a manifold. Let me explain. The idea is that at a very small scale, every part of the loop looks just like a tiny segment of a straight line, despite the overall curved shape. Thus, you can find a continuous one-to-one -one mapping from that straight line to a closed loop. So in other words, they are homeomorphic. Open-ended or even infinitely extending curves like parabolas, hyperbolas, and cubic curves still have a local structure similar to a line making them 1D manifolds as well. But not all closed shapes fit into this definition. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. This really, really helps us. For example, the number 8 has an intersection in the middle. And this crossing point, no matter how you zoom in on it, will not resemble a single line locally. The same thing can be said if we increase the dimension to 2. The simplest thing you can start with is a sphere. Locally, you can imagine that it looks like a flat plane. And again, the two are homeomorphic. Thus, any two-dimensional surface that doesn't self-intersect is also a two-dimensional manifold. Of course, we see that every day with the Earth. Looks flat to us, locally, but it's a sphere globally. We can go on to higher dimensions, but they're pretty difficult to imagine. So what can we do? Say we have a manifold, and we call it M. We imagine it to be embedded in an n plus k dimension. The n refers to the dimension of the manifold itself, while the k represents additional dimensions that are not part of the manifold, but are part of the surrounding space in which the manifold is embedded. On this manifold, we're supposed to have coordinates, right? But how would you know where to place them in higher dimensions? Well, we have patches, called local coordinate neighborhoods. 1 u alpha and u beta, and they are collections of points, or open sets. This means if you pick any point within this neighborhood, you can find a small circle in 2D, or sphere in higher dimensions around this point, that entirely fits within this neighborhood. It means that locally, the environment around any given point on the manifold can be described in terms of Euclidean geometry, even if the manifold itself might exist in a higher or more complex space. Now remember, since M is a manifold, we can associate or map each point of the manifold with exactly one element of a Euclidean space, Rn. This is done via a function phi. Suppose P is a point in U alpha. Applying the chart phi alpha to P might convert the geographical position of P into a pair of numbers representing its coordinates in a 2D plane, say xy. This mapped point is called the coordinate or local coordinates of P in our chart or coordinate system. Now these small circles around the points can create gaps and not cover the entire manifold. 
Because of that, overlapping areas exist. They provide a safety margin to ensure a complete cover of the manifold without any gaps. Since each chart maps a part of the manifold to Euclidean space, overlaps ensure that there is no point that is left unmapped, because boundaries of charts might not align perfectly. If we have a bunch of charts that together cover every point on a manifold, it's called an atlas. When two charts like phi alpha and phi beta overlap, the functions that convert coordinates from one chart system to another are called transition maps. This function translates coordinates from the phi alpha system to the phi beta system. This one translates coordinates from the phi beta system back to the phi alpha system. They can also be represented as T alpha beta and T beta alpha. These maps are defined on the overlap of the chart's domain. Specifically, phi alpha beta works within phi alpha of u alpha intersection with u beta, and phi beta alpha within phi beta of u alpha intersection with u beta. These areas are where both charts provide valid coordinates for points on the manifold. The smoothness or differentiability of manifolds is characterized by how many times you can continuously differentiate these transition maps. The derivative represents the rate at which one quantity changes with respect to another. For functions from real numbers to real numbers, like f of x equals x squared, the derivative at a point tells us the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at that point. The derivative itself varies smoothly without any abrupt changes or any jumps as you move along the curve of the function. Thus, this smoothness is what allows us to do calculus on manifolds. Being able to continuously take derivatives up to a certain order, k, means you can compute the first, second, and kth derivatives. And each of these derivatives is a smooth function itself. Continuous is the simplest level of differentiability, where functions are just continuous, with no sudden jumps. C1 are functions that are smooth enough to take one derivative, like going from a straight line, but potentially cornering path to a smoothly curving path. In CK, k times differentiable, you can take k derivatives, one after the other, and all of these derivatives are smooth. C infinity are smooth manifolds, and it's the highest level, where you can take any number of derivatives, and all of them are smooth. Keep in mind that when we have smooth mappings from a manifold to a lower dimensional Euclidean space, it simplifies our analysis a lot. Trying to analyze a manifold that is embedded in a higher dimensional space is extremely difficult. But when we work within the more familiar and more manageable context of a lower dimensional Euclidean space, the analysis becomes relatively easier. Now, this is how you get to a manifold, but how to perform operations on it deserves a video on itself. So please, if you're interested in knowing more, let us know in the comment section below. Also, do not forget that in every video, we're adding a PDF link in the description below so that you guys can follow in detail all the calculations we do in this video. Remember, that's really the only way to learn math, by practicing by yourself, by trying to reproduce everything independently. So I highly recommend you guys downloading the PDF link in the description below. This video was inspired by this article and this book. Link in the description. If you like this video, check out this one. See you there.